All right, uh, it's time to start our session. Uh, thank you for coming again, uh, our session. So, yeah, I'm Tatsuchiba, um, the researchers and the managers of the admin research and working on the, some AI accelerators, uh, software stack, and then reading some uh, op many operator project in IBM research. So I'm gonna talk about uh, um, our uh, recent run and how we can deal with the uh, um, AI accelerators in our big AI clusters um, managed in the IBM research. So let's get started first for the, some motivations chart. Um, as you know, uh, all you know about the, now it's really growing the um, demand of the AI training and the inference, right? Uh, no doubt of that. So. We have so many um, uh, applications in this field. It's now is the decade of innovation in the elements coming. Um, generative AI is there, uh, as you know, is there coming uh, year and to know the uh, learning uh, le <coughs> such as the um, chat GPTs and other vision transformers. And then beyond that, we have so many applications right now. Is there having to the implement in the LM agents, applied to robotics, or signing, finding out some material science, direct discovery, so on. So those are kind of stuff uh, there in the, right now in the LM. So the mean, that means for the increasing of the AI costs is non <laughs> uh, negative, right? So. Um, AI models is getting better, uh, bigger and bigger, and tons of the models is there having their um, over the 10 or 100 billions size of scales. That makes a lot of the in, an incredible training times over the end day and day or weeks or maybe one month. Uh, something like that. That makes a lot of the in infrastructure costs and also the electric power in here. So how to deal with that and then address that kind of inf um, problems in here, right? So we have so many solutions, right? <laughs> so, but uh, it's now in the, it's kind of the golden era of the how to build uh, some uh, high performance or ultra low power AI accelerators uh, in this field. So, NVIDIA GPU uh, is now uh, top rating their uh, accelerators, right? So, but uh, we have so many vendors and developing their uh, their own uh, custom accelerators. Google TPUs, Intel Gaudis, AWS training and inferences, and the IBM also building the, our own accelerators named IAU. Oh, so that's a kind of the brief uh, overview of the motivations chart. So. We are all now love the Kubernetes, right? So let's jump into the, the world of the Kubernetes. So the, how we can deal with the AI accelerators within the Kubernetes. So the device plugin is there, uh, you have the so, uh, solutions to expose our custom AI accelerator to the, your port, right? So device creating us and developing us some your own device plugin and through the uh, all the resources is exposed to the device um, through the Kubernetes, right? So yeah, that's good enough uh, uh, to just using the uh, some accelerators, GPUs, whatever. But the question here, so device plugin is really good enough to handle all the complex users and the workload, requ workload requests for the resource allocations, and that's one question. Another question is how we can coordinate if we have the multiple resource locations of a multiple resource type. So for example, con con considering the AI accelerators or network in storages, so on. So those kind of stuff um, we have to consider. So let me briefly introduce uh, the, some use cases or scenarios of the, what's the requirements coming here. So, so I'm just saying that about the Topology awareness is a very essential um, piece uh, capability for the accelerating the model inference or training performance. So let me first to the scenario one, uh, for which is you can see there are some, um, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, some uh, architectures of nodes, right? And uh, just said about uh, this very simplified architectures of the underlying hardware architectures. So you, as you can see there, we have four um, XPU. So I just said about uh, not GPU, but just said XPU, arbitrary P present unit here. Um, we have four <laughs> cards here, and uh, each two has a connect to the, some PCS switch in here. So um, some cases, uh, scenario one, 
uh, we want to get the most closest set of the XPUs existing the same PCI switch in these examples in the years. Otherwise, in, in, in some cases, for example, tensor parallels, execution, whatever, we can, if, if possible, is we want to allocate those set of the closest set of the XPUs in the years. And the next scenario is there uh, a little bit different, right? So we want to uh, get in the two card here in the nodes, not two, but we want to distribute it, uh, XPU rest to the several uh, different PCI switch. So that is a kind of another special use cases. Um, for example, some data or tensors existing in the MVM strategies and want to copy directly between here, uh, so one by one. Uh, so that's want to uh, <laughs> distribute this XPU to the different switches or nearest to the storage um, node. That is a uh, um, two example. So another example is a combination of the multiple resource uh, request over the, uh, for example, network. Um, that's to act, achieve the high performance training and inference, uh, leveraging the high performance networking is very important, right? So in that sense, um, choosing the selecting the closest set of the XPU and the NIC is very important, right? Um, that is kind of the another requirement and to accelerate some model performance. So um, as I just said about uh, this is a kind of a topology, um, three like topologies, but uh, in some cases we have to consider some ring-based topologies or others uh, to coordinate. So that depends how um, vendors or a user implemented their XPUs inside of that worker node. So, uh, those kind of stuff are kind of the use case in the scenarios I want to, we want to address. So next, um, Takuya will cover the uh, rest of the talk. Thank you. Okay, uh, now let's deep dive into the uh, internal procedure in, uh, of the uh, device allocation. So here, uh, this uh, slide illustrates the sequence between the Kubernetes and device plugin. So Qubit uh, lands on, a, on each node, which uh, is responsible to uh, create, for example, container for each pod. And the uh, device plugin uh, lands on, uh, on a node to help Qubit allocate the uh, devices. So the uh, sequence begins with, oops. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Yeah, uh, sequence uh, begins with uh, regist coding register API by the device plugin. So the each uh, component run as the gRPC server. So the initial, uh, initial operation is coding register with the uh, unique identifier for uh, each uh, device type. In this case, uh, example.com slash XPU. So this uh, is a unique identifier or uh, resource name for uh, this uh, device type. And then the Kubernetes uh, asks the uh, calls uh, list and watch API to device plugin to get the uh, list of uh, available devices. And this is the initialization. And then the uh, pod when pod request comes, then the uh, Kubernetes determines the which is the uh, uh, devices to be allocated. So this is a key point that the uh, the Kubernetes uh, is responsible to determine which uh, device to be allocated. And then the Kubernetes uh, calls allocate API of device plugin to get the uh, essential information, for example, the pass for the uh, concrete uh, uh, device pass or like so on. So there are an additional or optional ad advanced uh, way uh, to uh, achieve uh, device allocation, which is, uh, is works with the another API get preferred allocation. So the device plugin can call register API with uh, this optional uh, parameter, get preferred allocation available. So when the uh, registration uh, down with this uh, value true, then the Kubernetes uh, calls another API, get preferred allocation prior to the uh, allocate API call. So the, uh, in the get preferred allocation uh, API call, uh, Kubernetes gives the 
a uh, list of available devices and the quantity of the pod uh, request. And then uh, device plugin can tell Kubernetes its preference or a hint. So the, I prefer uh, these devices to be allocated. So still, uh, Kubernetes it's responsible to determine device, but the, in this uh, mechanism, device plugin can tell its preference. And then uh, call allocate and return the uh, information as similar to the previous uh, method. Okay, so let's uh, think about our challenge uh, regarding uh, allocating the uh, AI uh, accelerator. So first limitation here is that the user can only specify the quantity. As I talk in the previous slide, the, uh, in this case, quantity and the, here, uh, there's no uh, quantity information, but uh, the device allocation is determined on the Kubernetes. Okay, uh, here, alloc in the, by using allocate, device plugin is not responsible for determining devices. Nothing can be done. And uh, when we, uh, we enable the get preferred allocation, device plugin uh, cannot receive any parameters expect, except for quantity. So the ideal uh, parameter would be here. So, okay, I would like to use XPU, two XPUs, and which location is tier one, which means the same uh, PCI switch. But the, uh, in reality, we can only specify the uh, resource name and its quantity. So that's the first challenge, how to deliver user's requirements to the device plugin. And second uh, limitation, this is very similar, but uh, it exists in the uh, scheduling process. So this uh, slide illustrates the uh, flow uh, from the pod manifest to uh, uh, to the real uh, pod, I mean uh, container. So when uh, pod manifest comes to the API server, then it passes the uh, manifest to the scheduler. And scheduler refers, uh, uh, scheduler checks the, uh, its requirement. For example, uh, this uh, pod manifest requests the two XPs. Okay, the, uh, which uh, node is a uh, su suitable one? So it checks the label of each uh, node resource especially for the allocatable uh, label for the uh, device allocation. Okay, this worker node one uh, has two uh, remaining uh, XPUs, and the worker node two only has one XPU. Then the uh, scheduler binds this uh, pod to the worker node one, and Kubernetes receives it, and it works with device plugin, and pod will be deployed. That's the sequence. So as similar to the previous slide, we can only see the quantity. So the second challenge is how to determine the best node to satisfy a user's requirement uh, in addition to the quantity. That's the, ch the challenge for us. So uh, our solution uh, consists of two uh, main ideas. Uh, first one is the uh, use special resource names. Okay, not the name, but the names. So we, uh, how to say, the extend or uh, user uh, the resource name by prefix, uh, suffixes, sorry, suffixes. For example, a uh, user can specify uh, dev1 to get the first device and uh, device two for the second device, or user may specify the, some uh, allocation policy, for example, tier one. So I would like to get the two uh, nearby devices. So this uh, request uh, indicates that uh, user's requirement. And to tackle with the second challenge, uh, we uh, will use the uh, custom resource to externalize device topology and the allocation status. So a very easy, this is a very simple one, but the uh, core idea is that the, we uh, use custom resource instead of the label of uh, node resource. So, and we use custom scheduler to uh, uh, refer to this custom resource instead of uh, node label. Okay, the, uh, this uh, slide uh, shows the uh, 
flow of the uh, of our solution. So, uh, as I uh, mentioned previously, the core uh, component is this uh, custom scheduler and device plugin, but the, uh, it uh, works with several uh, external uh, uh, companion components. So, uh, first of all, the, uh, there is an operator or um, controller uh, in the control plane node, and it uh, deploys the uh, essential uh, uh, essential uh, pods like uh, device plugin or, or feature discovery, which uh, discovers a, a device from the uh, PCI bus and register it. So uh, in addition to that, it uh, creates a custom resource which manages the uh, spec, including topology and this, uh, allocation status. So this, this is the initialization. And then uh, when a pod request comes to the scheduler, then scheduler refers this uh, custom resource to uh, determine the uh, best node. And then the uh, node is selected, and then the device plugin allocates the uh, concrete uh, AI accelerators. And finally, the, the device plugin updates the uh, allocation status. Okay, uh, my node has three uh, XPUs, but one, is, one has already been allocated, allocated, and so on. So this is the uh, uh, workflow. And this uh, sequence diagram simply sh uh, shows the uh, registering process. So uh, we have one device plugin, but there are multiple uh, resource servers, uh, and each resource server represents one uh, resource name. Was, uh, in the standard manner, only XPU exists, but there are multiple uh, resource servers, the uh, XP under, underscore dev1, underscore uh, dev2, or dev3, or dev4, dev or so on, and the XPU uh, underscore tier0, this uh, represents the allocation policy. Uh, with these uh, additional resource servers, user can specify uh, their uh, requirement as a resource name. Okay, I need this one, or I need two uh, nearby devices. Okay, uh, there are additional challenges. So because the uh, if we introduce these multi not multiple resource names, uh, the Chibet understands the uh, status of the uh, allocate, allocate status as this table. Okay, there are uh, XPU, which, is, which consists of two uh, concrete devices. Oops, laser is <laughs> vanishing. But, this, uh, X, and, but the uh, resource names are extended, so there are another uh, uh, additional uh, resource names here. So for example, dev1 uh, is one uh, allocatable dev1 and one allocatable dev2. So internally, reality, in reality, they, are, they uh, represent the same uh, XPU, but the, uh, from viewpoint of Tibet, they are uh, totally distinguished. So in this case, okay, a uh, user requests a XPU dev1, then the uh, Tibet understand that the uh, XPU dev1 should be uh, decreased and allocatable XPU dev1 is now zero, okay. But the uh, issue here is here. So the remaining device is only dev2, so this must be one, but the, uh, it's still uh, two, because Kubernetes cannot understand this uh, relationship. So to solve the, uh, this issue, we can uh, use the custom, sch custom schedule. So as I mentioned previous slide, the uh, custom scheduler does not give uh, this allocatable uh, label to uh, select the node. So we, uh, ch our scheduler checks the uh, custom resource. So we don't need to care about these uh, values uh, uh, to uh, select the best node at, uh, to deploy the pod which requests the uh, XPU devices. Okay. Uh, uh, that's uh, our ideas, but the, uh, there are, uh, uh, maybe half of you uh, has already uh, had that the, uh, DLL in this uh, morning session, but uh, there is a, uh, another uh, uh, upcoming solution, which is DLL, Dynamic Resource Allocation. So uh, let me briefly uh, introduce uh, DLL to compare with it with our ideas. 
So uh, DRA consists of the uh, DRA driver and the scheduler plugin, and the developer uh, needs to uh, implement uh, DRA driver and uh, its uh, custom resources. And scheduler uh, plugin is, is provided. So uh, in our uh, idea, we need to create uh, our own custom scheduler. But if you uh, use uh, DRA, then uh, the scheduler is provided. And it is a part of uh, Kubernetes, uh, 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 Kubernetes deployment. So uh, it, uh, maybe uh, the next slide is better to uh, introduce the uh, DRA. So very similar to the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume. So uh, if a uh, user want to uh, request the uh, AI accelerator, then it, uh, user uh, adds the uh, claim in the pod manifest. And this claim refers to the uh, resource claim template, and the template contains the reference to the parameter, and the parameter uh, includes some uh, specific parameters for each uh, device type, in this case, xpexample.com. So this is a very, uh, how to say, beautiful solution, and the, uh, Okay, let's go back to this, this slide. So, uh, yeah, the major oops, major uh, advantage is, is uh, uh, we can pass any parameters, or including structured parameters. But unfortunately, it is uh, still alpha feature as of today. So, okay, the, the, then the, you may think about that, which is the best. So, the answer is. It depends. So the uh, the core uh, comparison is the, uh, here the uh, parameter expression par power of uh, parameter expression and the simplicity. So the uh, DLL uh, can uh, pass any uh, parameters, including structured pa structured parameters, while our idea just uses the uh, optional label in the uh, in resource name. But the uh, the simplicity is the uh, better, uh, better uh, aspect for our uh, ideas. So the uh, device plugin is relatively easy to write than the DRA driver, so we can keep simplicity of the implementation. And of course, uh, it is uh, uh, ready, <laughs> uh, while the uh, DRA is not uh, alpha. So th that's... Uh, so that's why it depends. So uh, we can choose our ideas or the uh, DRA in future. So <laughs> in future. So uh, as of now, we should use uh, our ideas to uh, effectively use a accelerator uh, in the uh, Kubernetes world. That's my. Right. All right, so that's our presentation. Is uh, I would like to summarize our presentations. Again, uh, the the two realizer AI accelerators, and in the here, uh, to we have prepared prepared in providing the custom schedulers and also device plugin and then the custom resources to store the, all the information of application or topology information within that. That's and we will coordinate all together to realize and some kind of the topology aware device allocations, considering the nearest or closest and uh, some good combinations of the resources. And that makes and uh, can address the complex AI workloads, resource requirements in the Kubernetes, right? So again, the DRA is uh, promising, of, of course, and uh, we should definitely move it in the forward to to go to the DRA solutions in uh, in working with um, communities. Um, so that that is the kind of the directions of the uh, uh, our. Or tools, and uh, one more thing I want to mention here is uh, our solutions. Uh, it's just saying the SPU, but uh, we have now developing uh, some for the IBM AIU operators. Um, that is really coming soon, available in uh, our um, Red Hat OpenShift catalog. So that means uh, we can use that <laughs> in your OpenShift. Okay. Uh, I also mentioned that all the contributors in our teams, and to uh, say thank you for all contributions. All right. That's all. Um, I will take your questions from the audience. We still have a 
five minutes. Yes, good enough <laughs> for the QA. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any no questions so far? All right. That's we can close our uh, our session. So thanks again for joining this this session. <laughs>